Hi, I'm Cliff, and this is my garage. Well, the Cayman has another 5,000 miles on it, so it's time to change the oil. Hey, welcome back to the garage. And if this is your first time joining me, thanks for dropping by. So, like I said, it's time to change the oil in the Cayman again. And I thought I'd shoot a video on this because changing the oil on the Cayman is different from uh, any other car I've ever worked on for a couple of reasons. One is the position of the car during the oil change. And the second is the oil filter itself is, is different from any other car I've worked on. So, uh, Let's get into it. Let's start off with the position of the car. Now, the Cayman, like many sports cars, the, the design objective is to keep the center of gravity as low as possible. And one way they achieve that is through the design of the engine by making the center of gravity of the engine uh, as low as possible. And you do that by making the engine short. Now, the way that Porsches achieve this is they've used a flat engine design. Many engines are inline engines where all the cylinders are vertical. And you do, other, do have other designs like slant engines where they're tilted at like a 30 degree angle to make the engine shorter and that helps with the design of the hood line, things like that. And then you also have V engines where half the cylinders are tilted one way and half the cylinders are tilted the other. Porsches and many high performance sports cars use a flat engine design where half the cylinders are flat that way, they're horizontal, and half of them are flat in the other direction. They're, in, they're opposed to each other. This helps to keep the engine very short. It also helps to let them rev much higher because the two cylinders are pushing in the same directions. And consequently, they have to use a different type of oil system. Now the Cayman, like many flat engine designs, uses a dry sump system where you don't have that big oil pan on the bottom. The oil reservoir is actually located elsewhere. And that can cause an issue when you're trying to drain the engine oil for an oil change. And what happens is normally, if you can't get under the car and Trust me, with the Cayman, you cannot get under there to change the oil. You have to pick up the car, and you usually pick up the end that's got the engine in it. Well, if you do that with the Cayman, if you just pick up the rear end and try to drain the oil, because you're tilting the entire engine, it will not drain correctly or will not drain fully. Now, I, I didn't know absolutely this was true, so I recently did a video where I tested this out. And I'll give you a link, a suggested video link up in this uh, corner of the screen here, and you can go check that out. But what I found was that about 8% of the oil didn't drain out when I let it completely drain because of the way the dry sump system was set up when you tilted it like that. So to get a full drain, to get all the oil out of the car, you need to keep the car flat. So to do that, there's a couple ways. One, you can be lucky and like I do, you can have a hydraulic lift where you just pick the whole car up and it's still flat. Works great. Now, if you don't have a hydraulic lift, and I'm sure most of you watching this do not have a two or $3,000 hydraulic lift system in your garage, you're gonna need to get a jack and some, and some jack stands, four jack stands. Usually you just uh, jack up one end of the car, put a jack stand on each side of the car, and set the car back down on the jack stands, and you're good. Well, in this case, you're gonna need four jack stands because you're gonna need to lift up one end of the car, put it on jack stands, go around, lift up the other end of the car and put two more jack stands. So it's on four jack stands and it's level again. Now keep in mind, if you're gonna use a jack to pick it up like that, you need to go find a low profile jack, a regular jack. The regular floor jacks that I got won't fit under this car. I had to go to Harbor Freight and just pick up an inexpensive uh, low profile jack and I'll 
I needed it right away, so I got it from Harbor Freight. Normally, I would have gotten it off of Amazon. I'll look up a few of them and give you a link to them down in the video description below. As long as I'm mentioning that, anything that I'm using that I can give you a link to find on Amazon, I'll do that. It'll all be down in the description below the video. Let's talk about the tools you're going to need for this job. Now, to remove the oil drain plug, you're going to need an 8 millimeter hex something. Now, you can use an Allen key. Works great. It can be a little tough. But if you're going to get an Allen key, make sure you get one that's got a nice long handle or, you know, find a, like a piece of pipe that you can slide over to give yourself some leverage because that oil drain plug can be kind of tight. So you want to, you know, get a good grip on it and get some leverage. Now, you can do it this way, but I think that getting an eight millimeter hex socket is a much better proposition because this is a little easier to use. You can throw it onto, you can throw it onto a nice good size uh, ratchet uh, socket driver or socket wrench or a breaker bar. And probably more importantly is that when you're putting it back in, you can put it onto a torque wrench because it need it's supposed to be torqued to 30, I believe 37 foot pounds. I'm not sure off the top of my head. I'll check that and make sure and give you a note here somewhere about what the correct torque is. But you need to torque it to 37 pounds. That way you, you know that it's in good and tight, but you're not going to run into any danger of uh, stripping it out, stripping it out, because stripping out the oil drain plug is just, it's a really bad thing to do. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, you know, use your best judgment. Don't go crazy with tightening it up, but make sure that it is tight because you also don't want it working loose and draining your oil out all over the road while you're driving. That is, that's worse than stripping out your oil drain plug. Now, you know, on a side note, if you don't have a torque wrench, uh, and you, if you can all at all possibly do it, go get a torque wrench. This comes in so handy because now you know you're tightening things to the manufacturer's specifications. These things are really easy to use. A modern torque wrench, you adjust it by adjusting the handle here. And the old style that had the pointer and the gauge, those are really kind of a pain to use. The new ones, they just, you tighten and you can hear it click when you reach the proper torque. In fact, I've also got a torque driver that it's like a screwdriver that works in inch pounds to tighten up small fasteners to their correct setting. Once you've drained all the oil out of the engine, of course, you need to change the oil filter. And that's where the Cayman is different from any other car that I own or any other vehicle that I own. And that's because at a traditional oil filter, you've got an oil filter canister and you've got the filter element inside and it's all sealed into one unit. When it comes time to take it off, you just grab hold of this, you spin it off, you put a whole new unit on again. And that's why I really like this three jaw adjustable uh, oil filter removal tool wrench, whatever you want to call it, because it, it, it adjusts the various size uh, oil filters. And then when you go to remove it, it tightens down and it's kind of hard to do this with my hands. It tightens down and it grabs onto the filter and digs in. It actually deforms the filter and it, it takes off filters very, very easily. But the Cayman's a little different. In the Cayman, the filter, can, the uh, canister, the housing is separate from the filter element. And all you do is replace the filter element and you also replace a rubber O-ring on it. And so since you're going to be putting the filter housing back onto the car, you don't want to tear it up. So you can try and get hold of it with um, your hands, kind of unlikely you're going to be able to, to, well, maybe you're a lot stronger than me, but you really need some kind of a wrench. And that's where a socket, or not a socket, a filter socket, or a filter wrench, some people call these, that's, you want to get one of these. And this is a 74 millimeter, and it fits, what well, happens to fit this one also, it fits right on top of the filter. You use a regular socket wrench and you can just turn it right off. Works really well. The reason I don't like these is because you got to buy one for every size of filter that you've got. I greatly prefer the, um, 
the adjustable one. And if you got to buy seven of these, you got to keep track of seven of these and you can probably never find the right one at the right time. So this is the only one I own just for the can. It's not really a tool per se, but you probably want to get some nitrile gloves. This is a messy job, especially when you're trying to, uh, when you first remove the drain plug, you're going to get oil all over your hand. Now these are Glove Works nitrile gloves. These are great. These are my favorite nitrile gloves. I've never seen any others like it. They're twice as thick as a normal nitrile glove, and they've got a nice textured uh, nubbly pattern on them that gives you a better grip than you would typically get. Super durable. To, you know, a normal nitrile glove, you use it, you throw it away. I reuse these over and over again. I just, when I'm done, I put some soap on right on the gloves and I just wash them like I'm washing my hands. They come perfectly clean and one pair lasts me a really long time. Now, these type of gloves, I only like to use for messy jobs that are like, like oils, oils or grease or uh, some other kind of chemicals. The I don't like them in general or for general use because they do make your hands sweat a lot. They're hot. For general work, I like using pug gloves. They're ventilated. They last super long. They are dirt cheap. They're like $1.20 a pair. Um, I'll give you a link to these and to the pug gloves down in the video description. Of course, we're going to need some oil, and Porsche recommends Mobile One Synthetic uh, 0W40. Now, this is the European car formula. I don't know exactly what the difference between regular Mobile One Synthetic and European car formula is, but it's a European car, and it was actually less expensive, so I went with this. Uh, link in the description, as always. As I showed you before, you do need to get a filter element. Make sure that you do get the one that has the, uh, the uh, rubber O-ring because you're going to need to replace that. When you remove the drain plug, it's going to have a small aluminum crush washer on it. That has to be replaced every time you pull that drain plug and put it back in. So make sure you've got these crush washers. They're fairly cheap. Uh, I got it, I think, in a pack of five. So we've got our supplies. We've got our tools. Let's get going. Looking at the bottom of the car here, and you can, here's the exhaust manifold, and here is the filter housing, and right here is the drain plug. So step one is to remove the drain plug, and let's pull the oil out of the engine. All right, let's start off with our hex bit socket. Get it in there, and let's... <sighs> okay, that came loose pretty easily. That was nice. It's a little sticky there. Gave up with the wrench too soon. Huh. It just keeps getting a little stuck at that particular spot. Okay. It hasn't turned loose yet. The hex bit's kind of jammed in there. I'll get it out later. I've got my oil catch pan right here underneath it. Uh, and yeah, it's not quite on camera. Just back it out until it comes loose. And then, boom. <laughs> and now, we just let it drain. This is going to take a while. Uh, it'll slow down to just a... A slow stream and then it'll go on for a very long time to completely drain the oil but just let it keep going until all you're getting is drips one eternity later all right clean clean up the plug got a fresh brush washer so I'll put that on there okay and now let's put this back in Come on. Uh, I always have difficulty getting this thing started. But one thing is the design of this plug. It's 
got no knurling on the side, and I don't know why they didn't knurl the side when you're trying to get hold of it when it's covered in oil. Let me try using. That's easier to use the. Actually, you know, I, I forgot the ideal way to do this is to use an Allen wrench. Yes, the Allen wrench is perfect for putting this thing back in because it holds it and you got this little L down here to get hold of it. I've already set the uh, torque wrench to 37 pounds, or foot pounds. We'll tighten this down. There, you hear that click? That means I've hit 37 foot pounds, and we're good to go. Clean up a bit of this mess. And I like to let it sit for five, 10 minutes just to make sure I don't have any dripping going on. This plug is not leaking in any way. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. I just ran into the house, got some of the drink. Chatted with my wife for a while. I don't see any hints of seepage there, so I think we're good to go. Adjust my oil catch basin here, and let's take care of this filter now. Okay, we'll just take and put this on here. Snug it on good. Oh, no problem. Now we just spin this off and holding it up with one hand while turning with the other until you feel the threads click and you know you're completely disengaged. Okay. And there's our old filter element. Just keep wiggling it and it'll come loose. Let that drain for a minute. Just let that oil get out of our way. Just gonna go in with a paper towel. Just wipe it nice and clean so that we know we can get a good seal between the filter element and that upper wall. Still seeping just a bit. All right, now we're gonna prep this filter canister. You can, or the filter housing, you can see the rubber O-ring that I was talking about right along in there. Just get kind of get underneath it with a screwdriver or something similar and just run around and work it off. Do the same sort of thing with the new one. And make sure you get it back into that same groove where it was located before. Okay. Then I'm going to dip my finger in some fresh oil and just go along here and rub it on there to make sure that that is lubricated. Going to do the same thing. With the filter. Well, as the other end, and then we're going to do something that I had never seen until a few years ago, but a lot of engine manufacturers are now recommending it. Seems like a good idea, which is to prime the filter by pouring it full of oil. And then Let it sit for a few minutes. You 
you can see the filter element is soaking up the oil. We're going to fill this whole car. That, that prevents any chance of any kind of oil starvation when the engine first starts up after the oil change. Oh, made a mess. Oh, whoa. Did so good at the very beginning when the jug was completely full and then kind of lost it toward the end. Okay, that's pretty good. Then we're going to let that sit for like five minutes and then we'll reinstall it. Let's now reinstall this. Hopefully I didn't overfill it too much where it comes gushing out. But I think by the time it gets that far into the cartridge, it will have sealed up against these threads. Okay. Normally I say you just hand tighten the filter as tight as you can without any tools. But in this case, Porsche has to provide a 19 foot pound spec for the torque on the filter housing. So I've put the cap filter wrench, which is what this one's called, but this is what I call a oil filter socket. And we'll just, again, use the uh, torque wrench and tighten it until we hear it click. There, and we're done on the bottom. Now we're in the back of the car underneath the rear hatch, and we need to open this door to get access to the oil filler door. So push this little latch, and mine's a little messed up. I've got to push this bit of carpet in. And here's your oil fill. This is your uh, engine coolant fill over here. So let's remove the oil fill lid. It comes come completely off. Just stick it right there. And they built in this little uh, rubber dam thing here to try and control any spills. I have too much confidence in my ability to make a mess to trust that. So what I like to do is I just cut up a big like lawn and garbage lawn and garden garbage bag and make a giant bib for this thing and tuck it inside that rubber dam. And now I'm fully protected because I have accidentally like dribbled some oil out in this area before and it would have gotten onto the carpet if I hadn't done that. Now one thing, tool I forgot to mention that we needed was a, uh, was a, uh, a funnel. And I like this particular kind of funnel here because it has this uh, slanted cut because you can't put the, the, um, the funnel in straight. The, the entrance or the, the tube runs like diagonal, so you can stick it in like this way. And now you can pour directly onto that wide open surface there. Actually, since recording this, I found this other funnel that I like much better. It fits perfectly and makes pouring the oil much easier. It seems almost custom made for this oil fill. I'll give you an Amazon link in the video description below. I've got the bottle that we were using to fill the oil housing, or the, the filter housing, the filter canister. I'm gonna continue using this one because it's a five quart jug and whatever I put into the oil filter housing counts as part of the eight quarts that's in the system. So by pouring this in, I'm now up to five quarts, I know, in the system. All right, so now we know we've got five quarts into the engine. We'll crack open the other five quart bottle and put in about two quarts. Let it sit for a little while and then check the oil level with the uh, measuring tool on the dash. The engine does not have a dipstick. 
to be gauging how much oil I'm putting, I'm going to be using a little uh, guide or uh, gauge right here. It's built into the bottle. Uh, let's see, this side here is quartz. So there's one, two, three, four. So we're going to go down to about this mark here, the, the bottom of the handle. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna go check. Okay, and as expected, it tells me my oil is low. All right, put in about another quart. It should take us up to the eight quarts. All right, go back and check again. Okay, we're all good. Let's put the lid back on our oil. Get it out of the way. Well, I'm going to get a paper towel here. Filter. I keep calling it a filter. Get the funnel out of there and don't forget to put the cap back on. Come on. Hmm. It just doesn't feel right. There. Ah, okay. There it goes. All done. The last thing we need to do is make this service now message go away. Like most modern cars, the Cayman has an oil monitoring system where it looks at a variety of factors like your driving habits and it calculates when it's time to change the oil and gives you this message to let you know that some sort of service needs to be done. Now, unlike most modern cars, the uh, Porsche has not given us a way to easily reset that warning once we have changed the oil. You know, most cars, you, you go into a menu system where you push a sequence of buttons, and that tells the computer, okay, I've changed the oil. You can start calculating with nice, fresh, new oil. I guess Porsche's attitude is like, well, what Porsche owner would ever change their own oil? So... Anyhow, you can, do, you can uh, make that message go away in a couple of different ways. Well, well, first of all, you can simply ignore it and just change your oil on a certain number of miles, whatever you decide. A tool that a lot of people use and recommend is iCarSoft. And this is an ODB2 scan tool that lets you hook into the car and do things like read error codes but it also lets you reset this service reminder. And I'll give you an Amazon link in the video description below. Now, in my case, I'm going to be using something I've got, which is a much more advanced tool called Durametric. And the Durametric tool connects to the ODB2 port in the same way, but it lets you do a lot more stuff. So I'm going to fire it up here. I have the professional version that lets me connect to an unlimited number of cars. So we're going to find a Porsche Cayman 987-2005-2012. Select OK. And then it says, OK, tell me about your car. And then I'll let it know that I have the Tiptronic transmission. Let me say OK. And it scans the car. You can do a ton of things. Like, uh, like I said, you can read error codes, clear error codes. You can enable and disable certain options and behaviors on the car. So we're going to come here to instrument cluster. And here's where you would look at fault code, fault codes. And we have no fault codes. We click on commands, reset service reminder, send. I don't know if you heard it in the background, but the car made a series of sounds and the 
service reminder is now reset. Thank you so much for watching, liking, and sharing my videos. It's very gratifying to see people watching my videos, clicking on that thumbs up button, and just uh, giving me feedback that, that, they are, that you're enjoying the stuff that I am doing. Now, if you haven't liked the video so far, please go down there, find that thumbs up button, give it a click, let YouTube know also that you're enjoying the stuff I'm doing. And if you are one of the 35,000 or so people who watch my videos every month and you are not a subscriber and about 99% of you are not subscribers, I sure hope today is the day that I earn your subscription. It doesn't cost a penny. It just lets me and YouTube know that you're interested in the kind of things that I'm doing on this channel. Now, if you're really interested in keeping up with everything that's going on here in the garage, you can subscribe to the channel. No, no, not subscribe to the channel. You can turn on notifications for the channel. You have to subscribe to turn on notifications. And that's the little bell icon. If you click on that, it changes shape and that turns on the notification systems for this channel. And now YouTube will let you know every time that I post something new from here in Cliff's Garage. I'll see you next time.